Baptist against Holy Cross. We are underway. The Bison in blue, Harvard in white. Our officials tonight, Nathan Hall is the referee, assisted by Matt Dorn and Mamadou Ba. So glad you could join us here from Levitis Pavilion in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Howard is six and five on the season. Harvard is seven and four. This is the Crimson's final home game of 2021. Still have one more non-conference game left on the road at Kansas next week. Five to shoot on the initial possession. Steve Settle has to settle for a long three offensive rebound, but thrown right out of the foot of Lucas Sakota. Ledlam knew exactly where the shot clock was, and he was able to get out there on Settle. Here's Ledlam. He misses from deep, so both teams living up to their character, shooting a three-pointer for their first field goal attempt. Acrobatic play by the former Columbia Lion, Randall Brumont, but that won't go. Of the three grad students in this starting lineup, Brumont and Ty Bibbs, number 33, the two are both transfers from Columbia. There's Noah Kirkwood, a player who Tommy Amaker calls maybe their best, certainly one of their most important. The senior from Ottawa, Ontario, gets the scoring started. As on the other end, Ty Bibbs misses the runner. There goes Edon Treitu, gets his own miss, and will draw the foul. That'll go on Brumont. Edon Treitu, a junior from Brooklyn, New York, averaging eight points a game. For Treitu, he got himself into some trouble here with the Euro step, and you'll see that there was just enough of a continuation to not have the travel call and that up fake. That's what drew the contact from Randall Brumont. Treitu at the free throw line where he's a 71% free throw shooter. Hits the first. You know, the, the last possession that we saw from Howard is something we're going to be seeing all night. When they get it, they want to get out in transition and attack you. They score over 80 points a game. They play at one of the fastest tempos in the country. And that'll be something that they try and use the defensive stops to help fuel some of their offense. Yeah, they know that when they're getting out in transition and running, they have the advantage. They have the skill players that the defense is disorganized. They're organized. They know where they're going with the basketball. Hawkins fed Settle, and it's out of bounds off Harvard with 18 to shoot. Settle averages 13 points a game. Hawkins the same. And then Kyle Foster, their leading scorer, is 14.6. So they've got a pretty balanced group that gets to that 80 and a half point per game mark. This Foster, one of the nation's dead eyes from deep. 10 to shoot. Hawkins motors into the lane, marked by Ledlam, who commits the foul. And there was definite contact there from Ledlam. It was a nice job of selling the contact as well from Hawkins. He's all of 5'11", 160 pounds. He spins into the lane and he throws the head back. There's a little bump. But there, the way that Hawkins sells it, looks like there's a whole lot of contact as he gets a couple of free throws. And head coach Kenny Blakeney was so high uh, on what he, he spoke about with Elijah Hawkins. We showed you the numbers at the start. Averaging seven assists per game, which is fourth in the nation. He's a 75% free throw shooter, but Coach Blakeney talked a lot about his toughness, his competitiveness, and he said he's a guy he would love to go to battle with uh, if he was still in his playing days. Which, if you ask Tommy Emmerker, Coach Blakeney... Uh, could probably still be in his playing days. And he, he said, you know, over my almost four decades in basketball, he said he's one of the best competitors that he's ever been around. That was knocked away. It looked like it was going to end up off of Harvard, but it goes off of Howard with 20 to shoot. Here's a look at the poke away from Sakota. Settle getting his long wingspan in there. It's Sakota that gets knocked out of his hands, but out off Settle. Now, and he, and again, for, for Settle, it's just that long, he's got the, the range, and he's listed at 6'7", but with that with those arms, he really comes at you as if he's a 6'10", 6'11", player. Sakota at the free throw line, out to Ledlam, his second three try. This time it's good. Chris Ledlam. Double-double his last time out against Holy Cross. Tommy Amaker was not pleased with the way his team played as the three will come up short from Kyle Foster, a guy who hits over 50% and quickly the other in North Carolina. And he says that that honor maybe is the one that means the most to him. And it's certainly something we wanted to highlight as Harvard plays the Harvard 
of the HBCUs in Howard. A 47-year head coach, big house games at Winston-Salem State, and one of the few minority, one of the few black head coaches inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Elijah Hawkins, looked like he may have been contacted yes. there, but a big time three for Howard out of the timeout. Four point Harvard lead, pressure defense on Kirkwood, it's turned over. Picked up by Brumont, and out of bounds off Howard, it will be Harvard possession, they get the fresh shot clock. Unless the officials want to talk about it and determine whether or not there was enough possession to reset. Look at this. Number 20 in blue, Brumont. He's 6'7", 230 pounds. He's built like an Easter Island statue. Just absolutely chiseled out of rock. And he's going down to the court to go get you a loose ball. That is exactly what you want from your power forward, your post presence outside the arc defending. What did Kenny Blake be call him? Uh, he's just a man. He plays like a man. And here's another guy who does the same thing, Chris Ledlam. His second three ball. Yeah, that is a good sign for Harvard if Ledlam can extend the defense like that because we know what he's capable of in the paint. Hawkins can't hit two in a row. Ledlam the rebound. And that's not Hawkins' game. He's the, the floor general, so he's trying to add a little extra wrinkle to the game plan for Howard here against Harvard's D. Sakota kicks it out. Trey two. Still plenty of time for Harvard to shoot here. Trey two on the drive with contact, gets his own miss again to the basket. No, having a hard time committing the bucket up close. Yeah, that's the second, second great offensive rebound in the lane in traffic by Trey two. There's a steal by Catchings. No one will catch him. Nine point Harvard lead. Normally it's Noah Kirkwood that's doing that on defense. This time it's catching. There's an High degree difficulty shot by Ty Bibbs. Gets it back to seven. Yeah, the body controlled by Bibbs because there were a pair of Harvard defenders who were looking to draw an offensive foul against him, but he kept himself in his own space. Fancy footwork, Noah Kirkwood. He has four early points as Howard prepares a line change you see at the scorer's table. All five getting ready to swap in for the Bison. The next whistle will bring us to a break in the action. Bibbs, 16 footer. Harvard off to a hot start here. Looking to continue into the media timeout upcoming. Three ball Ledlam, not this time. Bison, they like to go fast. This time a little too fast. Turned over into Ledlam's hands. Trey two, thought about it. Gives it out, catchings, a three. Brumont the rebound. He's used to these battles against Harvard, him and Bibbs played many a time over their Columbia career here at Levitis Pavilion. Part of that connection from Blakeney, who was an assistant coach at Columbia when he got back into college basketball, went into the business world after his time as assistant coach with Harvard, then got back in, ended up taking the Howard job a few years ago. As there's much needed jumper from Kyle Foster for two. Quickly the other end, catchings under the basket. A tough two. Good transition offense by Harvard. They saw just a crack in the armor to push and a great catch up ahead of the pack. Hawkins in and out. Two Harvard teammates fighting for it. You know, Ledlam just sicked him on the rim there. And well, we know if there's a rebounding battle between him and his teammate, Ethan Tretu, uh, Tretu's Maybe not going to win that battle. Already a fourth rebound for Ledlam. Sakota. So Harvard from three point range, two of six. Bibbs along two. Settling into that mid range game is. We haven't even hit the first media timeout. Yeah, we've gone a long while without a whistle here, Alex. Dakota gets it. He tries the long two. Rebounded by Hawkins. He's 5'11, averages four rebounds a game. That's third on the team. Foster frees himself up. This is partially deflected. He's in his 
it is the same thing that these Ivy League schools are going up against where there's not a whole lot of tape on these guys, that this is a roster full of transfers, this is a roster full of players who last year, even at best, they only played five games before shutting down for the season. So uh, Howard was one of the teams that was most strongly hit by the initial wave of COVID and uh, basically for the health of players, for stamina, for a number of reasons, they decided after five games that it, it was not worth it for player health purposes to try and focus on playing basketball. They just wanted to get their kids healthy again because of how strongly hit the athletes were by the coronavirus in their locker room. Thomas Weaver, Devin Richmond, Sam Green, Bryce Harris, and Jordan Wood all checked in here for Howard. This is a three for Kale Catchings, and he's had the hot hand early. Nine points for the Harvard forward from Missouri. For Kale Catchings, he had a, a couple of games in a row that he was not able to play, two games in a row where due to illness he did not play. It wasn't COVID. It was another sort of virus. And I think Tommy Amaker said that Kale lost 10, 12 pounds over the course of of that. So catching a couple of games returned against Holy Cross, and he played 27 minutes. There's a steal by Kirkwood, one of the nation's best. To the bucket, draws the foul, and gets the basket. Noah Kirkwood, he's a little bit of a gambler sometimes defensively, but he averages over two and a half steals a game. Here's the steal and the score on the other end. And that can get him into trouble sometimes, and at other times it can be an abundance of riches for Harvard where you come up with the steal and that's the easy conversion at the other end, and it turns into three points at the other end for the Crimson. Devin Richmond whistled for his first foul. Harvard up by 11, which is its biggest lead. Quick 5-0 run after the free throws coming out of the timeout. There's a good dump off inside. Bryce Harris, the forward from Brentwood, New York, averages six points a game. Those were his first two. Kirkwood kicks out. Louis Lesman. And a foul on the floor. Let's see who this goes against. Candidacy, she decided to take in a basketball game that night and headed over to catch the Howard Harvard basketball game on campus and uh, that's what kicked off her, her candidacy, which resulted in her becoming the vice president of the United States, ultimately. There's a five-second call on Denim Wojcik. Didn't get the ball in in time. Yeah, Tommy Emmerker said there was a bit of a kerfuffle in the stands uh, during the game, and they were wondering, were they going to have to stop the game, wondering what happened, but it was Kamala Harris entering the building at her alma mater. <laughs> Steal by Wojcik. Drives to the bucket with contact in and out, tipped out of bounds. It'll be Howard basketball off the fingertips of Sam Silverstein. Denim Wojcik has not been someone to take the offense himself. And there you could see how close he was to converting on a bucket. He has just two points over his last five games, spanning 78 minutes, Alex. But in those 78 minutes, he's only attempted five shots. So this is a guy who's definitely as a freshman looking to get his teammates involved first, and his offense will come at some point for the Crimson. Foster now 0 for 2 from 3, quickly in transition. Louis Lesman, beautifully done. That was a wonderful feed by Kirkwood. He drew two defenders and sent the ball into space and let his teammate just run onto it and let Lesman do what he wanted with the, with the transition opportunity. Bibbs off in the 3, and that has been the story for Howard tonight. 1 for 6 for 3-point range. One of the best shooting three-point teams in the country. As Kirkwood misses, they shoot it at 40%, which is 13th in the nation. Shots aren't falling, though, tonight. Wojcik gets the rebound. Lesman drills in the high pass. Into the corner for Kirkwood. Bounce pass, Ledlam cutting to the basket. Gets the friendly roll. Another nice find from Noah Kirkwood. And, and a nice strong take with two hands by Ledlam. It looked like he wanted to finish with authority and jam it down. He absorbed the contact. He couldn't get all the way to the rim, but still had the touch after the contact to finish. Once again, Kirkwood active hands gets the steal. 
Wojcik in transition, nearly threw it away. Lesman reeled it back in. Plenty of time for Harvard to work with. Ledlam underneath, absorbs the bump. Got it off Randall Brumont. That'll be his second personal. And free throws coming for Chris Ledlam, who shoots it at just over 70%. And this is what we're talking about with Wojcik, where he didn't really draw that second defender. Brumont stayed home on Ledlam. It results in two free throws, sure, but at a certain point, Wojcik is going to learn that, okay, I didn't draw the second defender. I'm one-on-one -on -one with my guy in the paint. I'm five feet from the hoop. Let's see if I can finish, if I can get through some contact and maybe earn myself some free throws. And Wojcik, a guy who's happy to fulfill his role, as you're talking about. Mm -hmm. and I think that he's got a lot of respect from his team as a result, as Ledlam missed them both. Offensive rebound by another young player in Silverstein, sophomore who's really in his first season of college basketball. Ledlam on the drive, commits the offensive foul, and that'll be his second personal. A little bit of a decision time now for Harvard. Ledlam's been so good, eight points, four rebounds, but there is little denying what he does here, lowers that shoulder. It's not the perfect positioning for the defender in terms of a textbook charge, but Ledlam's the one who initiates and the defender's in good enough position to get that call. Sometimes if you're the guy who's bigger and stronger, you're gonna get victimized uh, on that call for the offensive foul. And Ledlam is certainly one of Harvard's biggest team that has been decimated by injuries to its bigs. Hawkins to Bibbs, five to shoot. Bibbs on the drive, kicks it out into the corner, three-pointer coming from Sam Green, it won't go. The former Drexel Dragon playing now for Harvard to finish out his college career. Ledlam staying out there with the two fouls. Tries to shoot it over Green. Howard can bring it to 10 with a three. Green elected to pass that one up. Bibbs, he, he has been hot, averaging over 13 points his last five. See if they get it to him at some point. This is Richmond, he knocks it down. It's a 10 point game, it's a two. So an 11 point lead. Yeah, Richmond is someone that uh, has been a, a impact maker off the bench for Howard. Lucas Dakota high off the glass. Yeah, that's a quick answer for Har Harvard. They've had quick answers, it seems, all half. As Howard just can't get much closer than a dozen. Offensive rebound, Bibbs throws it off of Lesman. Ivy Powers, that's what he's looking to do with Howard in his third season now uh, with the Bison. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's something that a lot of his players have bought into to say, hey, we want to be on the forefront of something that since the early 90s, Howard basketball has been a non-factor nationally and in the MEAC as well, and they want to change that. Yeah, the only NCAA tournaments that Howard has been to, 1982 and 1992, and they've had a hard time putting together winning seasons as of late, but feels like that's going to change under Kenneth Blakeney as we get a foul on the floor, I think. Are they going to count that shot? They count the shot, and a foul is going to come here, I believe, on Sakota. Yeah, and Sakota gets a shot across the bow. He seems to be well enough as he stretches out that jaw. So that's Sakota's. Well, they've actually changed that to Louis Lesman. So that would have been Sakota's second. And the free throw is good for Devin Richmond. He's got five points, three point play, and it's a 10 point game. Was Louis Lesman on the court? That is a good question. I don't believe he was. In the arena, they put up 23. And that's who they've got on the game tracker as well. But we'll see if that gets altered at some point later on, and we'll keep you updated. But certainly on replay, the contact, the one-on-one -on -one defense was absolutely Lucas Dakota. He's the one that drew the contact, and he was the one that actually took the, the contact himself across the, the cheek. Also in the arena, they have that as the second foul for Kirkwood, but I have it as his first. Or excuse me, that was not Kirkwood uh, 
That was the second foul for Devin Richmond. Kirkwood with it here for Harvard. Here's a three from Sakota. Splash down. Look at that contact at the other end was a wake up call. Sakota, he can be really lethal from there, and that was a, a true stroke from him. Hawkins. He's just a jitterbug. He's so tough to keep an eye on when he goes through the paint. Couldn't hit the shot. Kirkwood on the drive, and he'll draw the foul. That'll be the third on Richmond. One of my favorite things that we got to hear from Howard's head coach during the weekly phone call we had with him, here's a look at Richmond with the hand check, was when he was talking about his freshman point guard, Elijah Hawkins, and we said, well, what does he need to to learn? What is Where can he grow? And Kenneth Blake, he said, I love learning from him and just learning what ways he can teach me to use him in a way for him to be successful. The travel called on Noah Kirkwood. Yeah, he, he compared it a little bit to the way Coach Mike Krzyzewski was with Bobby Hurley when yep. he was a student athlete at Duke University. And he said, you know, Bobby was uh, obviously a great player. You had to live with some of the mistakes that he made with all the spectacular plays. And by the time he left Duke, he was the NCAA leader in assists and, and also in turnovers in terms of all-time records. So you live with a couple of national championships, uh, you know, with the turnovers, I think. Yeah, I think with, uh, you know, in, in baseball, you got a guy that can throw 102 miles an hour, and maybe he walks a few yep. more guys than you're used to for a pitcher, but... If he's striking out twice as many, you're good with it. And there was a, a little bit of that implication when describing Bobby Hurley and Elijah Hawkins as well. That last foul was whistled on Samuel Silverstein. And out of bounds, it'll stay here with Howard. Looks like Harvard's defense tightened up a little bit. We're not seeing Howard get off into their transition as quickly as they, they'd like. And operate, I think, at, at the tempo that they want to play at. I mean, fast break points right now are 10 nothing in favor of Harvard, and that's just a situation of Howard getting ahead of itself. Another steal for Kirkwood, gives it up to Catchings, and we get a foul on the outlet pass. Shot will not count. Game has turned into a little bit of a foul fest as they get Bryce Harris for his first. That's a great job in transition by Trey to watch him change direction he was headed right to the chest right to the sternum of elijah hawkins and then slammed on the brakes and started sliding across the lane to prevent an offensive foul officials conferring whether or not this is a shooting foul or should be a one and one and they do say two shots here which I'm not sure that should be the right call it looked like the pass was yep. going out to the perimeter but it is going to be two shots here for Cal Catchings I didn't think he was in a shooting motion no me neither and Catchings not the sharpest of free throw shooters but one and one or shoot and two it doesn't matter he makes the first Chris Ledlam will come back in here for Harvard I mentioned the Crimson will hit the road to play the Kansas Jayhawks next week oh is that all yeah Number seven, Fog Allen Fieldhouse. We uh, asked uh, Tommy Emmaker how much uh, buzz was there about that <laughs> game and how much they were looking for. He said, I hope there's no buzz. I hope there's buzz for Howard. Then you promptly apologized and said, sorry, <laughs> coach, had to ask. He understood. 15-point Crimson lead. Hawkins just throws one up there. Kirk with the rebound, and then Hawkins comes in to commit the foul. And he's wondering why he didn't get the call on the floater that he threw up a moment ago. And you've got to like the the effort for Hawkins here. Let's keep an eye. He, he's trying to draw that foul with the head fake. I don't know how much contact there was, but then he commits the frustration foul and 80 feet from the hoop, he gives Noah Kirkwood a one-and-one -one opportunity. Right now, Howard trailing by 15, and... You know, two guys that you really expect to get a lot of production from. Hawkins and Foster combined two of ten. And one of five from three-point range. And so, you, you know, if you ask, how is 
Harvard built up this lead. Well, Howard has not gotten the production they would expect from their key guys. No, absolutely not. Just the, the one of eight shooting beyond the arc. Really, since getting into the, the throws of the season, Howard has made at least six three-pointers in every game that they've played. And that's what you would imagine from a team that's 13th in the country in three-point percentage. They're going to make that many. You might as well take a whole bunch. Well, we talked to Kenny Blakeney about the three-point shooting, and, and he did a double take with us. He had no idea that no. his team, the statistically as a group, was as hot a three-point shooting team as it was. And particularly with Kyle Foster, he had to ask us a couple of times, is he really second in the country in three-point shooting percentage? And Yes, Coach, 39 of 73, good for 54% coming in. I think he's dialed in on, on other aspects of his team, isn't necessarily paying attention to those type of numbers. This is out off Kirkwood trying to save it. Two seconds to shoot here for Howard. What a great effort by Kirkwood. Gets the strip and then goes to the court. So there's the strip. That ball's headed out of bounds. Just give up on it, right? No, not Kirkwood. He's going to the court, picks up a little rug burn on the elbow, and ready to defend again. I think it was Larry Bird who said, it, it makes me sick seeing a guy just watching the ball go out of bounds. Kirkwood's got a little bit of Larry in him from that perspective. Hawkins, Drew Iron, Kirkwood the rebound, and here comes Harvard pushing the pace. Kirkwood between two defenders blocks. Steve Settle. There's that long wingspan. Here's Khalil Robinson fresh into the game. Misses his jumper. Khalil Robinson missed about six weeks. Suffered a concussion early in the season. Made his return on Saturday. Three ball Ledlam. Rebounded by Hawkins. And there was Vermont a little hesitant with two fouls to go out there and challenge Ledlam. But this time Ledlam missed. Settle has been quiet as well. Tied for the second leading scorer, and he has not scored tonight. But the foul is picked up. Kale Catching's whistled for his first. Yeah, the difference in the offense for Howard tonight is that the, the man taking the most shots is Elijah Hawkins. He's attempted seven field goals. He's just one of seven. That is not the normal recipe for the Howard Bison offense. Settle. He'll draw the foul. Harvard kind of caught in a tough defensive positioning there. And Hawkins, or rather Settle, go to the free throw line. Where he is the fifth best free throw shooter in the MEAC. This will go on Trey Two. Yeah, and Trey Two got himself in a tough spot where the feet got tangled, and Trey Two really didn't have an escape route. He was trying to get out of the way, and Settle had his foot pinned to the court, and that's where the contact came in. Both of these teams playing without some key guys. We told you Harvard has been just decimated in terms of its bigs. You think of a guy like Mason Forbes, who was going to be a headliner, suffered a preseason injury, and then Howard has been without the services of Dontarius James, who was picked to be one of the preseason players of the year in the MEAC, but has been out because of eligibility issues regarding his transfer. Well, and yet despite that, these are still two teams that are going to be competing for respective conference titles. Howard in the MEAC, Harvard in the Ivy League, they have enough depth to still be super competitive within their conference. Ledlam left all alone, doesn't miss. 11 for Chris Ledlam. Harvard up by 18, its biggest lead. Just been slowly and surely pulling away from the Bison tonight in the midst of a 10-2 run, but that's over four minutes. So two points over the last four minutes for Howard. They need some offense. Holy Cross. Tonight, Howard has two offensive rebounds. So those second chance opportunities have been virtually non-existent to the Bison. Steve settled the third. Has so far made all three of his free throws. He'll have one more here. Settle is a redshirt sophomore from Glen Arden, Maryland. Heavy Washington, D.C. area presence on this team. And you would understand Kenneth Blakeney knows the area well. He went to DeMatha Catholic, played under the legendary Hall of Fame head coach Morgan Wooten, who is the winningest.
high school head coach in basketball history. A yeah. few high school head coaches in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, DeMathic Catholic, you, you might not get the best recruit year in and year out from DeMathic Catholic because those guys are often going to power five institutions, but you're going to get some pretty good players even if you get the second or third best. Ledlam at the buzzer, knocked back out by Wojcik. Fresh 20 for the Crimson, inside catchings. Good ball rotation. And Trey 2 will just settle it down. Ledlam is being guarded right now by Elijah Hawkins. He's got about an 8-inch differential, and Ledlam wants the ball. Three ball, Trey 2. Always oh, a volleyball matchup underneath the basket. Out of bounds, last touch by Howard. It was last touch by Howard, and Brumont, when he was touching it, was also over the out of bounds line, the end line here. Here's a look at this is Ledlam battling with number three, Hawkins, who's all of 5'11 in the paint. And that's some of that toughness yeah. that Coach Blakeney was talking about. Foul on the way to the basket. Kirkwood draws it. Looks like this will go against Ty Bibbs. His first personal. Ninth on Howard, so not a shooting foul, and it's a one-in-one -one opportunity here for the Crimson. Howard's a pretty deep team, and Kenneth Blakeney kind of takes that cue from Tommy Amaker, who historically has had teams that he's not afraid to play. 15 guys. Harvard's a little bit lighter in terms of the depth this year because of the injuries, but that's usually the case for the Crimson. Settle starting to get himself involved. Offensive foul. Get the feeling like Steve Settle, the light bulb went off a few minutes ago, said, I need to be a little bit more active in terms of getting my team back into it. This time a little too active. It's a great move, but it's, there was a little flick of a forearm. Trey 2 couldn't believe it. He had gotten beaten on the, the hesitation move outside the arc, but then recovered beautifully, and Settle got a little handsy. Logic marked by Foster. Approaching two minutes to go before halftime. Wojcik in the corner, a three ball. Rebounded by Hawkins. Wojcik seemed to have some daylight, then all of a sudden, Settle came flashing out, all elbows and arms at him. Three ball, Foster. He remains cold from the outside. He's missed all three of his three-point tries. For a guy who's second in the nation in three-point percentage, a foul under the basket will go against the Crimson. Wojcik. Little out of control after distributing the basketball. He got the pass out fine. But watch as he runs right into Hawkins, who is set up beautifully waiting for him. Just outside the restricted area. Now we're trying to cut it a little bit closer before halftime. Instead, it's turned over. Another steal for Kirkwood. Tries to dish to the outside, that's broken up. Back into the hands of Hawkins, up ahead, Bibbs! <laughs> NCA and T by 21 points in the second half, and they really credited a change in their defensive style to spurring that comeback. So, we'll see if there's a similar change and similar result in the second half tonight. Wojcik, offensive rebound, Silverstein. Now Howard got one miss, they needed to grab the rebound. Try to trim down this 14-point deficit at halftime. Trey 2, tough take. First field goal for Edon Trey 2. Quickly the other way, it's Settle, another offensive foul. Wojcik takes it on the other end, and Steve Settle a couple of offensive fouls over the last two minutes. Yeah, there's a, a few Howard players that will be worthy of... There we go, that's the foul. Keeping an eye on in terms of foul trouble. Richmond's got three. Settle, Brumont, Bibbs with two fouls each. Probably goes to, to some of the defense that they play. They turn teams over so much, but sometimes fouls are the other side of that coin. Harvard has seen that with Noah Kirkwood this season. Ten to shoot. 30 left in the half. Trey 2 spots up straight on, in and out. Rebounded by Harvard and Josh Hemmings. Recently entered the game, Harvard a little bit more size with the sophomore Hemmings from Toronto, 6'9", 230. 
Two second difference between shot and game clock. Gray two around the Hemmings screen, but Hemmings gets called for the moving screen. Yeah, and Hemmings was settled in some ways, but his right side, his right elbow, yep. That's what Trey Two's saying is, hey pal, you can't do that with the right elbow, the right, it wasn't quite that exaggerated, but it was enough. Hawkins, final second, the runner is at Yale in two days, so uh, tough, tough schedule after starting this stretch with Georgetown. He said someone's gotta fire the guy who makes the schedule. Yeah, why would he possibly have set themselves up like that going into the holiday break? Noah Kirkwood, outstanding first half. Catchings finds Kirkwood, under 10 to shoot. Lucas Sakota in the lane. Runner won't go, rebounded by Brumont, who was scoreless in that first half. You, you mentioned the numbers, but just to re-emphasize, Noah Kirkwood is close to a quadruple double pace as Foul drawn by Elijah Hawkins. He'll go to the free throw line as they'll get Ledlam for his third. Again, the numbers for Noah Kirkwood in that first half, nine points, seven rebounds, four assists, and four steals. There's a storyline with Kirkwood, but the storyline is Chris Ledlam picking up a third foul. And that's, that's huge right now for Harvard. Ledlam's been an impact player with 11 first half points. What his impact is rebounding wise so and two of his fouls have been on Hawkins so it's the 5'11 point guard who's done a nice job of a couple of times earning contact and whistles against the 6'6 junior Ledlam Howard is now a perfect 11 for 11 from the free throw line tonight as there's a steal on the inbound Bibbs lays it in quick 4 nothing spurt here Ty Bibbs the steal and score and here's this pressure defense maybe Forcing Harvard uh, into some mistakes. See if they can keep up with this type of energy the entire half as it's poked into the backcourt. Blakeney wanted the over and back call. Trey two to the bucket, left it short. Slapped in the direction of Kirkwood who picks up. Hawkins goes down, still a little bit banged up. Picked up by Settle and they're gonna stop it here because Elijah Hawkins had a big collision with Noah Kirkwood. Kirkwood grimaces a bit, and Hawkins is in a bit of pain as well. Yeah, for, for Hawkins, hopefully it's just the air getting knocked out of him, but he's, he's got a, a little bit of a hip right now that he's trying to work through. And there was a ton of contact. He Probably for the best for Hawkins that he stays out on the court if he's going to try to work through this, if it's that kind of an injury going to the bench and letting it tighten up on you is not the greatest course of action. He's he's that competitor. He's trying. He wants to stay out there. Tough guy, and I think he was being asked, can you go by his head coach? And uh, here you see, he's just having a tough time ambling around, but is going to give it a go. Wow. He ran into an absolute brick wall there going after the, the loose punch out. So it's Howard basketball. There was no foul call. They stopped it because of the injury. And Elijah Hawkins will stay out there. The Washington, D.C. native out of DeMatha Catholic. Tough guy. See if he's hampered at all because of that bump. Kirkwood stays out there, too. He was on the other end. Bibbs. Settle has to give it up. Kick out, settle, three-pointer, good. Second three ball made by Howard. Seven for Steve Settle, and Howard has scored seven points coming out of halftime. Beautiful little 7-0 run. Crimson looking for their first bucket of the second half. Kale Catchings has it. He's got 13. That was a nice back cut as he got settled to challenge, went for the risky steal, didn't come up with it. Bibbs, a little turnaround shot. Ledlam the rebound. Ledlam in that first half had four boards. Harvard by 11. Ledlam, right wing three, short. Rebounded by catching, save to Trey two. 
Catchings from the corner, too strong, rebounded by Foster. Been a great game so far for Catchings. A three would have tied the career high for him. Wasn't to be. The drive blocked by Kirkwood. Denied Kyle Foster. Kirkwood the other end. Ledlam the finish with two hands. That was an athletic finish. That ball was not over the rim. He had to go down, grab it, and put it back up top. Chris Ledlam playing with those three fouls. Still maintaining his aggressiveness. Foster the three. He finally hits one. All right, this is the Howard team that we could have seen coming out of the gates. A couple of threes. Down by 16 at the break. Cut it to 10. Ledlam, he gets blocked. Brumont. Three ball, Foster. Ledlam gets another rebound. I think that Tommy Emmerker might have needed to call a timeout if that had gone in. There's a flat looking three from Kirkwood. Howard can get it back down to single digits here. Harvard got off to a strong start. Really has not been pushed since as we get a foul. That'll go on Kirkwood. His first personal. Take another look at that dunk by Ledlam after the miss here by Kirkwood. And Kirkwood knew what he was doing. He was having a couple of players convert on him. He knew where to miss, that if he wasn't going to finish with a head of steam, that Ledlam was there for the cleanup. And boy, did he ever. Kirkwood, Ledlam, and Catchings go out. In their place, Josh Hemmings, Louis Lesmond, and Samuel Silverstein. Hawkins. Settle. He's got a pretty smooth handle for a guy who's 6'10. And how about that finish? Eight point lead. It's the closest it has been in quite a while. 10 2 start to the second half for Howard. Silverstein. Hemmings trying to back down Brumont. Kevin Nickelberry. Nine-year head coach who was the one who started this series that Harvard and Howard have played over the last decade or so. He's now an assistant at LSU. Foster is a guy that over his last three games coming in were his three starts. His first eight games this year were off the bench. But over his last three games, he's averaged over 30 minutes of contest. Free throws don't go for Josh Hemmings. He's now one of four on the season at the free throw line. And... Howard can get a little bit closer here. Harvard had previously been 7 of 10 at the line today. Hawkins. It's pretty active, even though he took that bump on the hip a moment ago. 10 to shoot. Settle. Working on Silverstein. Left it short. Just enough defense, just enough reach for Silverstein to affect that shot. Louis Lesman. There's Sakota. Harvard has a mix of some of its bench players and starters in there. Trey to his starter. Missed initially, it looked like. It got the bounce. And Edon Trey to makes it a 10-point game. This is just the will of Hawkins making his way into Hemmings, and Hemmings picking up the foul. It, it looked like Hawkins wouldn't be denied, and you, you start to see some of that toughness and that competitiveness shine through from him. Hawkins goes to the bench, but yeah, he, he saw that he had the angle and that he was able to initiate the, the leg contact from Hemmings, and there's no way you're getting an offensive foul call when the leg is what's being contacted. I mean, he's given up 10 inches and 70 pounds in that matchup, and he's still wouldn't back down as here's a foul underneath by Harvard. That's Edon Treitu's second personal, and free throws are coming up here for Foster, rather for Gib uh, Bibbs. Uh, an absolute zip pass in to Ty Bibbs. With a 70% free throw shooter coming in. Kenny Blakeney so happy to have Ty Bibbs in the program along with fellow former Columbia Lion Randall Brumont. And 
He took a tour of the rim there before dropping through. Can draw back to within eight here. He had been averaging about eight points a game his first six games. He's up that to 13 and a half points over the last five, starting to settle in. Chicago native. Less dramatic make that time for Bibbs. Talked about the last five games for Bibbs. 12 or more points in each of them, averaging over 13 a game in his last five. He's up to 10 today. Ludlam and Kirkwood back out there for the Crimson. Silverstein. Kirkwood. Defense has certainly gotten tougher for Howard here in this second half. Six to shoot. Kirkwood into the lane, gives it up. Ledlam, that's a three. Rebounded by Foster. Settle, nice move all alone. It's Khalil Robinson. Well, Robinson is a really important player, and he's a huge boost to get him back after he missed so much time earlier this season. Junior from Columbia, South Carolina. Trying to get him back into the mix. Played just six minutes against North Carolina A and T, but there knocked down his second three of the season. Good defense, Vermont forced the miss by Ledlam. Five point Harvard lead. It has been all Howard here in the second half. Bibbs, Foster in the corner. Robinson goes to work on Wojcik. Kick out Foster, it's a deep three, short. Would have made it a two point game. I think Foster thought he was gonna be a little more open than he was when he caught that pass where he was on the floor, he was in rhythm. Punched out. The Howard defense has not given away an inch it feels like in this second half. And there's a blocking foul called on Bibbs. That'll be his second. Uh, Howard hoping for the offensive. They've limited the Crimson to just six points. Adam over the first five plus minutes. And remember, Harvard had 24 points over the first eight and a half minutes of the first half. A 17-6 run to start this second half. And you saw there close, but the right call. Lesmonds. Oh, it looked like it was true, just a little too much. Crimson scoreless over the last two plus minutes. One for their last six. Settle shows off the range. It's a one possession game after being a 16 point lead at the half for Harvard. Crimson have led by as many as 18. And Harvard's got to get the train back on the tracks here. How Howard is brimming with confidence. We told you they had a huge second half against North Carolina A&C State on Saturday. They're doing it again here in Cambridge. Wojcik on the drive, off the glass. No, Brumont the rebound. Great help defense by Brumont. Get Bibbs, the runner won't go. Kirkwood nearly lost it. Ledlam all alone. And the Crimson have gone ice cold from three-point range. 0 for 6 in the second half. Down to 24% for the game. Meanwhile, Howard's make third, three of five here in the second half. They had just one in the first half. Here goes Robinson, blows by Ledlam with contact, scores up. The second half on a 21 to 6 run. And Howard currently in the midst of a 9-0 run. Harvard has not scored in three and a half minutes. Harvard started four for nine from three point range. They're just one for their last 12. Sakota trying to change that. Nope, one for the last 13. Kirkwood though, the offensive rebound. Lesman catchings. Howard defense has gotten so much better in this second half. Kirkwood's miss. Rebound bobbled, picked back up by Catchings, and he'll this matchup between Howard and Harvard so special. Yeah, it, it's an absolutely incredible. If you can match that up with with Harvard, with with anyone, but it is it's the it's the faculty academic institution that this is a place that really enriches whatever your passion is when you come to campus. At last foul called on Foster, his second. 
Harvard trying to extend a lead that has dwindled to one. Ten to shoot. Kirkwood, step back three, and Harvard needed that. First points of the second half, Noah Kirkwood, he has 12. Here's Hawkins trying to match it in and out. And also before we get any angry commenters, I think it's Puff Daddy for right now. I think that's the current iteration of Sean Combs' stage. I think he was Sean when he was there at Howard. And yeah. Three balls to take on the Princeton Tigers. It's a big day for Harvard Athletic. Got that game, and if you come out to Levites, then later on, over there at Bright Landry Hockey Rink, you've got Harvard against UConn in men's hockey action, 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock that day. Bibbs hands it off, settled. 16-footer is good with an end of his face. Steve Settle, you know, he took a little while to get himself going, but he has really become a big factor now up to his season average at 13 points. Richard sophomore for the group, and he's one of those pieces that as Howard makes that leap next year and beyond, he's going to be a part of it. Really seems to have a unique skill set for a guy who's 6'10". Kirkwood. Three ball, Sakota. No, Settle gets the rebound. Steve Settle kind of looks like one of those players who had a late growth spurt, so he had a lot of those guard ball handling type of moves, and he retained them even though he sprouted a few. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking, and he could probably use a few more pounds to really help him where he's currently playing down low. The miss, but a foul call. This will go against Brumont. And Harvard will go to the free throw line here. Boy, this was close to falling. Excuse me. Uh, say that foul goes against Silverstein. Foster here to the free throw line. Foster, seven points. And the guy that Kenny Blakeney says, we got to get him the ball. You know, when we get down in transition, we got to find him. And not that they're going to force the offense to run through him, but if he's going to hit the three at the clip that he's been hitting in this season, they need to make sure he gets plenty of opportunities. Yeah, and he hasn't been gun shy. It's not 54% shooting on just a, a smattering of threes. He's taken plenty of threes, and yet that only proves you need to take more. Nine for Foster. Team's leading scorer, third in the MEAC with 14.6 a game. Three-point Harvard lead. Howard has never led in this game. Crimson basketball under deflection. Great hands by Harper. Number 34 there, freshman. It's interesting the way that you know, Harvard at one point, you made mention of it, is led him to the bucket, and he'll draw the foul on Harris. At one point, it looked like Harvard was on pace to score over 100 points here tonight. Right, and over the first eight minutes, they had 24 points on the board, and you thought, okay, this, this Harvard team is living up to what Howard wants. They want the high-pace offense, and Harvard was saying, yes, please, let's do this. But you get the feeling yeah. like Kenny Blakeney's message to Howard got through as far as amping up the defensive pressure and he says that's really where it starts. I, and that's no surprise given where it starts for Tommy Amaker, where it started and starts for Coach K. Always starts with that defensive side and that leading to the offense. Did all these guys, every basketball player in Division I. Oh, follow won't go from Harris. Out comes Kirkwood on the break. Did all these Division I players, they've all got egos when you're playing basketball at this level. And everyone's ego grows when you put the ball through the basket. But we want egos to grow when you make a good defensive play. Well, they want egos to dwindle on the other side. Trey two can't hit the three. Harris, along with Princeton, you get Cornell flashing every once in a while. But Harvard has been elite over the last decade and a half under Tommy Amaker. And that's, again, as you say, on track for Howard. Dumped in, Brumont uses the backboard and draws the personal foul. 
first points of the night for Randall Brumont. And he's got a chance to make it a two-point game once again. Foul called on Lesmond, his second personal. And you know, Tommy Emicker talking about his former assistant coach. He said he is one of the best evaluators and projectors of talent that he's ever come across. He really can identify it. And that's a skill that he has certainly been able to bring to Howard. And it's something that Harvard benefited. He was the guy who recruited Jeremy Lin. And that's just a guy that is going to be so effective at this level, right? Where you're trying to find these guys that aren't four or five star recruits. You're trying to find two star recruits and turn them into all conference players. Settle had the block on the other end. Foster nails it. Howard in front. First lead of the night for the Bison. A remarkable 31-14 start to this second half. Ledlam looking for an answer, drives on Brumont and will draw the foul. That's the third on Brumont. But remember, Brumont has played 25 minutes now tonight, and he's played the majority of those 25 minutes with two fouls. Foster not denied. In the first half, he was one for five beyond the arc. He's made both of his threes here in the second half. Kyle Foster, a dozen points. He had four at the break. Ledlam a chance to put Harvard back in front. Now has 15 points. You know, it, it was really looking a little bit dire when it was 42-22. It was an 18-point lead for the Crimson with under four minutes to go in that first half. And there, there just wasn't a whole lot of life that we saw from Howard and you know, nothing was working, a lot of turnovers, the usual suspects weren't scoring for Howard and you're wondering, where's this Howard team that really played tough against Georgetown a week ago, a team that really turned on the Jets in the second half on Saturday? Well, here it is and this is now two games in a row that Kenny Blakeney has really pushed all the right buttons at halftime. Well, Randall Brumont averages close to 10 points a game, and he went over 30 minutes without a point until getting a three-point play just a few moments ago. That might have been deflected by Sakota on the drive from Hawkins. It's been the defense that has keyed this run. Three-point try, Kirkwood too strong. Offensive rebound, Catchings in the corner. Sakota follows up. Lucas Sakota, second three of the night. Hawkins came so close to picking the pocket of catching and stripping that ball. Instead, it was Sakota who he left open. There's another steal. Noah Kirkwood to the basket for two more. Kirkwood, his fifth steal. And a tremendous job. Didn't get the foul call, but used his body and would not allow the defender to get through him to contest that shot been a 7-0 run for Harvard since Howard took a one-point lead on the drive that's short by Bibbs wondering where the foul was Crimson in transition this is the most momentum Harvard has had in quite a while a fumble by Silverstein he recovers nicely worked to his advantage he fumbled it into open space and he wound up picking it up right on the doorstep Ivy League game and then, of course, Harvard is hoping to be playing here in the middle of March when the Ivy League tournament will be hosted at Levitis Pavilion. Deflection by Ledlam and then another by Silverstein. Bison basketball. Khalil Robinson trying to make some plays, trying to make something happen there. Elijah Hawkins on the bench right now, the igniter for the Bison. Robinson, who's just about his size at six feet, 160. Foster, kick out. Corner three, no from Settle. And that's out off of the Crimson. 20 seconds to shoot. Shot clock reset with 5.01 to go. Sakota pleads his case, saying, hey, wasn't that off of Robinson? He's not winning that argument. And Sakota now heads off to the bench. Howard has gone scoreless over the last 2.24. Been a 9-0 Crimson run. Foster 
Dribbled it off his shoe, gets it back. Robinson slices for Bibbs. Eight to shoot. Foster into the lane, spin around shot off the front of the iron, Ledlam the rebound. Really good defensive possession for the Crimson. Quickly up ahead, catchings, and that was uh, just a little bit overthrown. Yeah, that was the right decision. Catching was open. Ledlam saw the, the open man in transition, but that was nowhere close for Catchings to be able to grab it. Needed the go-go gadget arms to pull that one in. That rebound for Ledlam gives him a double-double. 17 points, 10 rebounds. Kirkwood, 14 points, 11 rebounds. Three ball, good, and the foul. Kyle Foster. He hit the three to give Howard the lead a few minutes ago. Now is a chance for a four-point play. Trey to call for the personal. How about that? Just didn't give Foster a chance to land. He, he got in his space. Sometimes you see that foul come in terms of not allowing the feet to come down, but Foster just didn't have anywhere to go with his follow-through on the shot. Cannot make it a four-point play, but still Howard gets it back to five. Just when it looked like Harvard was going to leak in front and put this game away. Foster's made all three of his threes here in the second half. Ledlam in the corner, tried to drive, but called for steps. In terms of being unselfish there, but maybe to a fault. And Hawkins is back in for the Bison. What a game it has been. If you just joined us, Howard was trailing by as many as 18 in the first half. It was a 16-point Harvard lead at halftime. Bison stormed back to take a one-point lead a few minutes ago. And now Harvard's on top by five. Rebounded by Ledlam off the miss. Kirkwood to Ledlam. He wasn't ready for it. Picked up by Hawkins. Racing down the floor, Hawkins, oh, acrobatic take, offensive rebound, miss on the follow, and it's punched back out to midcourt. Here's Kirkwood, nobody in front, Kirkwood for two. Harvard here, Howard's outscored him by nine in the second half, but it's been a couple of strong pushes from Harvard to create a little more distance. Double doubles for Harvard's Chris Ledlam and Noah Kirkwood. They've got 33 points combined and 24 rebounds between the two. Ty Bibbs looking for an outlet. Was able to get it to Foster. Awkward attempt blocked away by Catchings. Catchings in the corner. They let him roam there freely. He wanted to take it, but there's too much time left on the shot clock. Made the smart decision to just put it in his pocket. Burn a little bit more time. Kirkwood around a screen from Catchings. Gets it right back. Here's the three ball. No. And then a foul on the box out against Howard. I think they'll get Ty Bibbs for this. This is the seventh foul on Howard. So, Ledlam, you'll see him. Yeah, that, the reason for that call is the fact that Bibbs was grabbing him. He, yep. he wasn't back to the basket he was squaring up on the body and you got to have your back to the defender to the guy crashing in Chris Ledlam gets a free free throw attempt that does not count so it is a one and one here that's Nathan Hall wanted to make sure everybody knew that it was a one and one and well the result was the same as the one that didn't count Four of seven at the line for Ledlam. Hawkins on the drive. Cannot muscle his way in. He was looking for the foul call. And you know, Harvard hasn't scored here over the last minute, but neither has Howard, so we're still stuck at seven. Yeah, Howard's gone one of their last eight now. Ledlam offensive foul, and he comes up holding his left leg and immediately limps on over to the bench. And that's a concerning sign for Harvard. Yeah, the left ankle, not a knee, which I think is a good sign, but watch the left foot here. Yeah, he lands right mm. on the foot of Hawkins. 
Yeah, that hurt. Mm. That hurt. And he is in some pain over there on the Harvard bench. And that insult to injury, it was his fourth foul. So Harvard's top rebounder out of the game right now. Here's Foster. Robinson into the lane, kick out, settle, corner three on the way is good. Mention how good they've been playing this season. One other note around the top 25, number 10 Alabama goes down to unranked Davidson. Crimson Tide, second loss of the year. Davidson's got another good team under Bob McKillop as there goes Noah Kirkwood, basically unguarded to the basket. 18 for Kirkwood. Robinson gets it right back. Back to a four-point game. Seven points for Khalil Robinson, under 90 to play. See if the power defense steps up again. Few teams force as many turnovers as Howard. 40th in the country in steals. 12th in forced turnovers per game. Sakota blocked but fouled. And Sakota goes down hard. So does Brumont, who I think they're going to get for the foul here. And Brumont got the basketball. Normally, you're allowed to make contact after you get the ball. And uh, this is where I'm confused. Here the ball goes up, clearly gets the ball. His follow-through clearly gets Sakota. I don't think you would argue with either of those. And now Brumont being told to come back to the lane. He's going to get subbed out, but it'll happen after the free throw attempts. So good news for Harvard is that Sakota did pop up all right. Crimson just lost Chris Ledland to what appeared to be a foot injury. And he is, you can see him going back toward the Harvard locker room. That is Ledlam there in the background, and he, he's still in quite a bit of pain, and that's a sign it's concerning for Harvard, you know, certainly beyond this game. We've got a trip to Kansas, and then Ivy League play coming up. Right. I, I think at this point you are targeting 10, 10 days away if you're, you're Harvard. When you see Ledlam go off like that, you are just hoping he's back in time to help you in conference action. Big free throws by Sakota. Six-point Harvard lead. A minute to go. Bibbs. Hawkins, Foster a three, too strong, rebounded Trey two, and now foul from Bibbs. Still only the ninth foul for Howard, so a, a chance here for Howard to, as they hope, get a miss on the front end by Trey two, who is a pretty good free throw shooter. This season, Trey two is now 22 of 30 on the year, better than 70%. That includes his two that he's made tonight. Robinson goes out, coming in is Jordan Wood, who has not played that much for Howard. The sophomore from San Antonio. Harvard at the free throw line this season, 73% as a team. They've been pretty steady there. And if the Crimson can hold on here tonight over the final minute, I mean, pretty nice job of riding the ship when things, uh, you know, they were taking on a lot of water at points in this second half. Wood, too strong on his first shot of the game. And a rebound from the Crimson, eight-point lead. There's a foul from Settle. And uh, becoming academic at this point. Howard's not getting makes on the other end, and Harvard keeps making its free throws. Well, it's always academic between these two. Of course. <laughs> I set you up for that one. No, but just going back to what we talked yeah. about at times over this, this broadcast is that both coaches you know, told us and others within their programs can attest it. It goes beyond basketball, and it's something that Harvard and Tommy Emmerker, the vision that he had, you know, he, he had wanted to play Howard, I think, as soon as he got here. It took a little bit of convincing to get former head coach uh, Kevin Nickelberry to you know, get on board. And I, I think that he, he eventually realized how beneficial it would be for both these schools and how important it is to so many people to see these schools 
competing and, and having that relationship. It goes beyond the individual sporting event that goes on as Silverstein gets called for the foul on the make here. Yeah, and, and for these for these two programs, I thought one of the more cogent things that Tommy Amaker said is, yeah, we need to play these guys, but it doesn't need to be at the beautiful take for contact for the bucket. But Tommy was saying it doesn't need to be uh, us doing them a favor. We need to go there. We need to have our athletes, our students on these campuses and being part of the Washington, D.C. culture, going to different museums when they go down to make the trip to Howard that we're going to go and, and visit the Smithsonian, visit the Civil Rights Museum, just learn and take in all of these things that uh, you don't necessarily get in the classroom and you have to step on the campus to truly appreciate. And he was saying that the connections and you know between the schools, you know, when they were down in Washington, D.C. a few years ago, Elena Kagan, Supreme Court Justice, came to the game, former head of Harvard Law, and you know th those sorts of connections that the, the schools have. And we talked about you know, soon to be at that point, Vice President Kamala Harris coming to a game to see Harvard Howard and bringing people together and just letting, I think, folks know that, that don't know about the tradition that Howard has uh, is just as important. Final 30 seconds, Bibbs with the make. He's up to 12 points. And now Howard just trying to play tight defense. Settle does commit the foul with 18.4 to go. It's going to shape up to be a, a, a roller coaster victory here tonight for the Crimson. Started off like a freight train that couldn't be stopped, and Howard made such a huge push at one point, led 57 56, and then Harvard turned it around here. A 31 13 run over the first eight minutes and change to begin the second half actually put Harvard in the rearview mirror for a moment and Harvard did really well to respond not just once but twice with some runs that to, to help put their foot down here on, at home three ball taken by Bibbs that will come up short and let's see if Harvard has the chance to dribble out the clock here leading by eight with 10.3 seconds to go. And it looks like they will allow the Crimson to dribble it out. Kenny Blakeney's off the bench and will shake hands with his mentor.